Greetings everyone. I hope you're well and having a great day. I'm Donovan. Welcome to Burnout and Break Stuff. In this week's Chrysler Product Variety Show, we're going to assist a friend and fellow YouTuber in completing a two barrel to four barrel conversion. Now, Ryan has already installed the intake manifold, the carburetor, and he's completed all of all of that work, cars back running. What we're gonna do is we're gonna provide the missing link to the four barrel that will prevent the vehicle's transmission from burning up. Now think about that for a second. Why would converting from a two barrel to a four barrel burn up the vehicle's transmission? Doesn't make much sense, does it? Well, let's follow along and find out. So let's get into this week's video and see what happens. Lots of fun. Let's get into our kick down linkage modification. I'm helping a friend and fellow YouTuber at McLovin Garage, Ryan, who's doing a two barrel to four barrel conversion on his 70 Cornet 440. What we wanna do is we need to modify this linkage for the wider four barrel footprint than our two barrel we're replacing. What's important about modifying the kick down linkage is we want to make sure that it's still connected to the transmission and what this linkage does is when the carburetor is pushed back to increase the load on the engine, the transmission needs to know to increase the line pressure. So a lot of people will take a two barrel conversion and not do this modification, leave this linkage off and burn their transmission up. So what this linkage is doing for us is, I have pull out our neutral stick here. It goes in this arrangement, pushes this bell crank back. This arm goes down and then on the transmission here, it pushes back this bell crank pushing the throttle valve lever all the way back, applying maximum line pressure, and then it allows the governor to do its job and shift the transmission at maximum RPM. So what we need to do is, in this particular we need to get this linkage all the way up against the back of this carburetor. So when we put our 530 seconds Allen wrench in there to neutral, the neutral position for all the service adjustments that are covered in the factory service manual. We're gonna end up cutting this back here on the straight part, sliding it forward since we have this centered from its longest adjustment to its shortest adjustments right in the middle of the thread count so we can still maintain our adjustment. I'm gonna move that forward. And then what we also need to do is put a, a tab on the side of it where this spring will reach back to pull the linkage forward up against this stud. So let's get into modifying our linkage. Okay, with our kick down linkage mocked up on our small block here, you see we're in fairly good alignment. You wanna make sure that you use the appropriate shoulder nut there. This one here is inappropriate. It's not long enough and it leaves the threads out for the slide lever to hit. Now that we've got that all sorted out, what we're going to do is I'm going to take a measurement from here to the back of our opening at an inch and seven sixteenths. So now what we'll do is go ahead, remove this, I'm going to cut this here, and then we're going to add an inch and seven sixteenths of rod material here. That will bring us up to here. We already have our adjustment centered on the threads, so we have we can make it shorter and longer as necessary. So we're all set to go. We'll head over to our box of springs and the like. We have a, approximately a 50 pound of tote full of automatic transmission parts, bell cranks and the like. We'll go ahead and find us a piece of rod material that we can 
we can cut and add in its place. This looks like that'll fit well. We'll just go ahead and cut this down and get her welded in there. Okay, let's do that. With our one and seven sixteenths inch measurement for the addition of the rod that we need to extend our lever from the bell crank on the back of the engine up to our carburetor, let's go ahead and get our cuts made. With our 1 and 7 16 extension rod cut, I'm going to go ahead and chuck this up in my, my drill for a makeshift lathe, if you will. I'm going to run the drill and put a bevel on each end of this so the weld filler rod will have a place to fill. Simple as that. So let's get to that. That a second time for the other side. We're all set to go. With our one and seven sixteenths addition run through our lathe, <clears throat> our lathe, if you will, we'll set that aside. Next up, we're going to go ahead and cut our rod to extend it. I need to maintain the same relationship with this elbow and this, even though there, this is adjustable, it has a bend, has a bend in it. And that needs to kick outward toward the carburetor from the bell crank. What I've done to help facilitate alignment in the future is I've already taken a straight edge and a scribe and scribed a line along the backbone of this. That way when I cut it, I extend it, I've got a line that I can match up just to help uh, make it a little bit simpler putting it back together and keeping the proper orientation. So let's chuck this up in our vise and get our cut done. With our extension and our linkage cut, next up we need to figure out how to hold all these pieces together in the right orientation. So how are we going to do that? I don't know how anybody else would do it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this piece of aluminum channel and a couple of hose clamps. The steel welding won't stick to the aluminum, so what I'll do is clamp this into the vise after I have these set up. Put these together like so. Take the hose clamps, clamp it around the channel, and then go ahead and make my welds. So let's go ahead and get this chucked up in our channel, clamp down, and then we can make our first weld. With our rod chucked up in our piece of channel, clamp down, clamp down. Let's go ahead and burn it together. We'll be able to get some tacks on this side and then we'll take it apart. Once we get, uh, get it all put together, we'll take it apart and then burn the whole thing together. So let's get started. With our Scribed lines in alignment now, clamped into our little fixture here. 
we'll go ahead and tack weld the second set of second part of our extension here and then we'll go ahead and test fit it on the engine before we do a complete perimeter weld finishing up the rod so let's go let's go to it So how did we do with our tack welds in place and our rod assembled on the bell crank and the carburetor we can see that we hit that right on it's excellent alignment all the way around now all we have to do is finish burning our tack welds together into a complete rod I think it looks great. I think Ryan will be happy with that. Next up, while we have our rod assembly on the engine, we're gonna go ahead and get this tab cut and ready to weld here. We need the spring tension to be able to pull this back up. So that's what we're gonna do here. All right, let's go ahead and get that cut and weld on there same as we're doing the rod that way we can just finish weld it all in one go and we should have a finished product all right let's get to it okay we have our spring tab cut down to size clamped into our fixture here let's go ahead and burn that together we have our spring tab for returning our rod holding it up against the stud on the carburetor here now what we'll do is go ahead and remove our allen wrench keyway here now we'll test our return spring pressure it's doing what it's supposed to do so let's go ahead and get it all burned together and get it back to Ryan. Excellent news. Let's check on our finished progress here. We're all lined up. We have our return spring and it's all connected. So that's working well. And what we'll do is go ahead and remove our Allen wrench here. Our spring tension holds our linkage up. That's what we're after. So, mission accomplished. Looks okay. And uh, let's get it back to Ryan and get his car working. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. And I really appreciate everyone tuning in to see what's going on at Burnout and Break Stuff. I greatly appreciate uh, all the likes, the views, the subscriptions, especially helping me get closer to uh, that 1,000 subscriber mark. So what's most important is that everyone has a great day. And uh, remember, treat others the way that you like and want to be treated. I think that's a great way to live. So have a great day. Thanks for stopping by.